Hi guys, it's Anna. Today I'm doing a tutorial for this tie front crochet top. And there's two versions. You can do like this one with the short sleeve or I also show you how to do a tank version that wouldn't have the sleeves and they're both really pretty. I have had this picture on my Pinterest since before I even started crocheting and I always wanted to make it but I could never figure out how to make something that looked like it because the actual top isn't crochet I don't think. So I finally came up with my own little design that kind of is similar to it. If you guys make your own, please tag me if you post anything on like Instagram or TikTok because I would love to see what you guys make. And if you're just in a generous mood and you wanna say thank you for me posting this video, then you could subscribe because it's free and it does actually really help me out. And I'm trying to get to 50K. I'm not super far away, so I think we can do it. Um, but yeah. I would love that if you wanted to do that. And really quickly before we get into the video, I just want to thank Flexi Spot for sending me their Kamhar standing desk. But basically it's this height adjustable desk that you can adjust from a sitting level to a standing level, which I absolutely love. And by the way, this is not sponsored. They're not paying me to say any of this. They just sent it to me and I think it's really cool. But it's also nice and compact, so it doesn't take up a ton of space, but you also get like a really decent sized desktop I feel like and it has a drawer that I can put all of my junk in I have like crochet and sewing stuff in it right now and it also has USB ports which I love because I can charge both my phone and my laptop because it also has a USB-C port which is what my MacBook takes and so that's like so cool to me but yeah it's really nice it's behind me I'm gonna be taking it with me when I move in a couple weeks to my new apartment because it's just like a really nice desk and they also have a 30-day return policy so if for whatever reason you're not happy with it you can return it and get your money back but yeah it's really nice and i would recommend giving it a try if you're looking for a desk that you can change height because it's super super convenient but thank you to flexi spot for sending me the desk because i actually am very pleased with it and will be using it but without further ado let's get into the tutorial so the first thing i'll need is some dk weight yarn you guys know i like this one this is the loops and thread loops and threads cream cotton yarn and here is the information on it you will notice that it says this is a weight four yarn but I feel like it's thinner than a traditional weight four yarn, so I recommend a DK weight yarn for this pattern. You'll also need a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is pretty small, but I like how it looks when you work it up with a hook this size. You'll need some scissors and a darning needle to weave in our ends. And I'm gonna use a tape measure. It is, I guess, technically optional, but I would recommend it to make sure that you're making the right size. To start, you're gonna make a slip knot and then insert your hook. And now you're gonna chain a multiple of 20. And this is the part that you might have to improvise a little bit and just kind of do some trial and error to see what works for you because it is a little bit difficult to find the exact amount on your first try. Like I had to do it a couple times when I was practicing to get the perfect length. But basically you're gonna chain a multiple of 20 here and you want your final chain length to be a little bit over half of your bust measurement. And the reason that it's a little bit over is that this is a ripple stitch. So your chain, instead of just like a normal, a regular stitch, usually you just have a straight chain at the bottom but this is a ripple stitch so your chain is going like that so it makes your final product shorter if that makes sense because the chain is not the full length it's being used to make these dips and crests of the ripple so it's going to be a little bit shorter so you want to chain a little bit more than half of your bust measurement but then you also have to keep in mind that it has to be a multiple of 20. so for me just for reference i have a 34 inch bust and i'm going to be chaining 80. so just start chaining that's one two three four and you want to keep your tension nice and loose don't make your chains too tight but I'm gonna chain until I have that multiple of 20. Again, I'm gonna be doing 80 total. And this is gonna be making up the back panel of the top. So I'll just come back to you once I have my total stitch number. So I chained my 80 and this is how long it is. Half of my bust would be here at 17 and I'm at a little under 19, maybe like 18 and three quarters. And what I found is that the final width of it once I start doing the ripples and stuff is gonna be around 18 inches. So we're losing about an inch here, I guess. Um, 
not fully though, but it also is gonna depend on your tension here and how loose or tight you made your chains. And I made mine decently loose, but this is like the fraction that I ended up doing 0.54 about of my bust. And that's gonna work out for me because I want this to be like a nice loose fitting top. I don't want it to be skin tight. And once you have your multiple of 20, then you're gonna chain three extra chains. And then in the fourth chain from our hook, so the fourth after doing those chain three, we are gonna make a double crochet. So there's one, two, three, four. We're gonna go into there with a double crochet. Like that. And by the way, I'm gonna be like walking you through every row um, and doing my best to explain, but in case you are having some trouble, I'm gonna link um, where I got the idea for this stitch from and where I learned how to do the stitch in the description. So yeah, I'm gonna make it hopefully pretty easy to understand, but just in case you need a little bit extra practice or you just wanna watch someone else do it, I'll link um, Meladora's Creations, I think is her name, down below if you wanna watch her video on how to do the same stitch. It's the same, I just do my like turning chain a little different. Like I only do a chain three, she did a chain four. Um, I just like how this looks more. So yeah, I'll do my best to explain, but just in case you're having a little extra difficulty, maybe if you're more of a beginner, then it might help to go watch her video. And after we've made that first double crochet, we're gonna work a double crochet decrease. So to do that, you just wrap your yarn around the hook like you would a regular double crochet. And in that next chain, you're gonna insert your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through those two loops like you would at the beginning of a double crochet, but instead of yarning over and pulling through the next two loops, you're gonna yarn over again, go into the next chain, that, pull up a loop, and you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, just like at the beginning of a double crochet, but now you have three loops left on your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And now we are gonna be making five double crochets, one in each chain. So in the next chain right there, Insert your hook. Make sure you get both loops of the chain on your hook. And make just a plain double crochet. Then in the next stitch, make our second, like that. And we're going for five here. So that's two, three, four, and then a five. And so now we are gonna be making our like peak of the, rub the ripple. So in this next stitch, this next chain there, we're gonna make an increase where we do two double crochets in one stitch. So this is the next chain. We're gonna put two double crochets into that same stitch. So there's one and then in that same stitch, make a second. And in this next stitch, we're gonna be making three double crochets in one stitch. So an increase, but with three instead of two, like we just did. So there's one, and then there's two, and then lastly, there's three. And then in this next stitch, we're gonna go, we're making this symmetrical. So we're gonna do two double crochets in that stitch. So we have two, three, two is basically the pattern there for the increases. So I'm making two double crochets in that stitch. So as you can see, we did two in that one, three, and then two in that last one. So after we do that little peak, we are gonna, again, make it symmetrical. So we're gonna do those five regular double crochets. So next stitch is right there. Go into that stitch with just one double crochet. And then in the next one, that'll be our second. We're just doing plain double crochets. That's three, four, five. And so now we have to make the like trough, I guess, of the ripple. So this is the peak and now we're making the bottom, the little dip there. So in this next stitch, we're gonna be making a decrease with two stitches, just like we did at the beginning there. So wrap your yarn around the hook, and this is the next stitch. Go into that stitch, 
circle loop a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through three. And then, this is different to how we started at the beginning, we are gonna make a decrease with three stitches. So yarn over, go into that next stitch, which is right there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, wrap your yarn around the hook, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we have three stitches on, the on our hook, but again, we're decreasing with three stitches now. So then wrap your yarn around the hook again, and then go into that third stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and now you have four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all four, like that. And then, again, we're making it symmetrical, so we're gonna do that same two, three, two thing that we did with the increases, but with decreases. So now we have to decrease with two stitches again, just like we did right before we just did these three. So wrap the yarn around the hook, go into this next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, wrap the yarn around the hook, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through three. And now we're just starting our repeat. So we're gonna make five regular double crochets, do that little crest where you do the two, three, two increases, then do five, and then do the two, three, two decreases. I just did my five just plain double crochets right after making a peak of increases. So I just made my five and then you should have four stitches remaining. And if you don't have four stitches remaining, then you've messed up somewhere and somewhere something has gone wrong because you should only have four stitches left. So if yours is wrong, then you just have to go back and see where you messed up. For me, it's really easy to mess up. Like for the increases, I would do like the increase of two and then the increase of three, but then I would forget to do the increase of two after. Um, but it can literally happen anywhere. Just messing up one stitch will mess up how many you have left. So just go back and make sure that you get that correct. So you should only have four stitches remaining at the end. And how we're gonna end this is we're gonna make two decreases of two stitches. So we'll make our first decrease just like normal where you start your first double crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then wrap your yarn around a hook, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through three to make that decrease of two stitches. And then we're gonna do that same thing again with these final two. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through three. So we just made two decreases of two, and then you're gonna chain one and turn. And for this row, we're just gonna be making one single crochet into every stitch, and we're gonna go into that very first stitch right there. So this chain that we made does not count as a single crochet. So go into that very first stitch with just a single crochet, and then we're gonna go into every single stitch all the way across. And I'll just show you when I get to like one of the peaks or like one of the increases or decreases and how to do that. But yeah, we're just doing one in each stitch like this. For the increases, you're literally going in every stitch. So, you know, you're not skipping anything. Just go into every single double crochet you see. And then here at the decreases, it's nothing too difficult like we've just basically decreased two stitches into one there so we're just doing one single crochet into that decreased stitch and then same for this one it's three stitches into one you just do one single crochet and then same for this one so just wanted to show you that but um yeah you're just doing one single crochet into every stitch all the way down and then I'll show you what we'll do at the end I'm at the end of row two now and as you can see I have one double crochet left and then I have that chain right there at the end. And we're only gonna be going into this double crochet. So we're not putting anything into the top of this chain. We're just doing our final single crochet into that last double crochet. And then we're done with row two. So now you're gonna chain three and turn. And we're gonna skip going into this very first stitch that we're already in right here. And we're also gonna skip this next one. So we're gonna go into this stitch right there with a double crochet. And now you're gonna chain one and we're gonna skip this next stitch and go into the next one with a double crochet. And then we're gonna chain one, 
skip this next stitch, go into the next one. And we're gonna do this for a total of four times. So we have three here and not including that first chain there, just the double crochets, chain one, and we have three. So we are gonna chain one one more time, skip one and do one there. So now we have our four, not including these chains. And so now chain one again and skip a stitch, go into the next one with a double crochet, just like normal, and you're gonna chain one again. But now instead of skipping a stitch going in the next, you're gonna put another double crochet chain one into that same stitch like that and then chain one. And then we're gonna make one more into that same stitch like that and then chain one after that. So we have three double crochet chain ones into that one stitch. And now we're gonna skip this next stitch, go into the next one with a double crochet, chain one, skip the next one, go into the next one with a double crochet. We're going for a total of three, so we have two now. Chain one, so one more, skip the next stitch and go into the next one with a double crochet and then chain one. So now we have those three there. And now it's time to do the dip here. And so what we're gonna do now is skip this stitch, go into the next one, just like normal, but we're gonna be making a decrease of three stitches. Um, and we're gonna do like skipping a stitch between each of the three stitches. So start your double crochet, just like normal, only pull through two, and then wrap the yarn around the hook again. And we're gonna skip this next stitch and go into this second one from the hook. Pull up a loop, pull through two loops, and then Wrap the yarn around the hook, skip this next one, go into the next one, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through four to make a decrease with three stitches, skipping in between each one. And now you're gonna chain one and skip this next stitch, go into the next one with a double crochet, chain one, skip next one, go into the next one, double crochet, chain one and we're going for three, just like normal. Skip the next one, go into the next one and then chain one. So we have our three there after making that dip. And now it's time to repeat the pattern until we're back here at making this increase. So we're just gonna make the increase now. So you skip that next stitch, go into the next one with three double crochet chain ones. So there's one double crochet chain one, go in the same stitch, double crochet, chain one, same stitch, double crochet, chain one. And then you skip the stitch, go into the next, and now we're just repeating our pattern. So I'm gonna keep doing this same pattern over and over until I reach the end, and I'll show you what we do there. And here at the end, I made my peak with the three double crochet chain ones in one stitch and then I did three double crochet chain one skipping a stitch in between. You should again have four stitches remaining if you did everything correct and so we're gonna make a decrease with two stitches. So wrap your yarn around the hook, skip this next stitch, go into this one, pull through two loops but we're gonna make a decrease so wrap the yarn around the hook. We're skipping this next one and going into that last single crochet there. Pull through two and then pull through three. So we made a decrease, skipping a stitch in between the stitches since this is like the mesh row. And now you're gonna chain one and turn. And now again, we're gonna be doing one single crochet in every stitch. And so we're gonna start with that very first stitch right there. So just make a single crochet. And then for your gaps here, your chain one spaces, you're just gonna go into the gap directly and make a single crochet. And then you're also gonna go into the stitch right after. So go into the gap and then also the stitch right after. And when you get to like the increase right here, you do just the same thing, like it's nothing different. You go into each stitch and then also the chain one spaces get a single crochet also. So I'm just going into the gaps and into the actual double crochets. And then when you get here for the decrease, it's the same thing. This is just counting as one stitch here. So you're gonna go into that one stitch and make one single crochet. And then in the gaps, you just do one and then also in the stitches. So yeah, you're just doing one single crochet in every stitch all the way until the end. 
I'm at the end and I just have this last double crochet and then these chains here. And just like we did before for the single crochets, you're only gonna go into this last stitch. You're not gonna go into anything here. And now you're gonna chain two and turn. So for our first double crochet, we're not gonna go into this very first stitch right here. We're gonna go into this second one. So just make a double crochet there like that. And now we're gonna be making a decrease with two stitches. So for this very next stitch, you're gonna go in there and make a partial double crochet without going through those last two loops and then go into the next one and finish that double crochet decrease with two stitches. And in the next five stitches, we're gonna be just doing regular double crochets. So in this next one, just a regular double crochet and then into the next four for a total of five. And once you have your five here, then we're gonna make the peak. So just like normal, like we did down here, you're gonna make two double crochets into this one stitch. And then in the next one, you're gonna make three double crochets. There's my third. And in the next stitch, you're gonna make two double crochets. So we have two, three, and two, and that's just kind of the pattern you're gonna do for both the peaks and the troughs. So once you do your two, three, two increases, then we're just doing our five regular double crochets. So there's five, and we're literally just doing the exact same thing that we did here on our first row, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but you're just doing the two, three, two increases, then five regular double crochets, and then we're gonna do our decrease now. So in this next stitch, work a decrease with two stitches. So there's my first one, and then now we're gonna do a decrease with the next three stitches. Go into the next one, pull through two, and then that third one, pull through two, and then pull through four. And then the next one, it's a decrease with two stitches. And this is exactly what we did on that first row. That's why I'm not really going into it too much, but you're just gonna do the same thing all the way down and I'll show you how to end it again. Here at the end, I just did my five double crochets after making the peak. And so now we you should have four stitches remaining, just like we did earlier. And again, just like we did earlier, you're gonna do two, two stitch decreases, so. Go into that first one, pull through two, go into the second one, pull through two, and then pull through three. So that's our first decrease. And then our second one, we're gonna do the same thing. Pull through two, and then in that very last single crochet, pull through two, and then pull through three. So we did two decreases of two stitches. And so that was row five. And for the rest of the top, this is like the back panel of the top. We're literally just gonna continue doing this. So go back to where I showed you how to do row two, which is this single crochet row right there. And you're gonna continue doing two, three, four, and five, just over and over until you have a length that you want. So just repeat rows two through five and feel free to go back and watch where I show you how to do each row. And you're just gonna do that until you have a length that you want. I'll show you my length that I do, but basically you want it to go from like the top of your back, like underneath your, the top of your spine, I guess. Um, and then you want it to go just down to whatever length you want your top to be. All right, so I did the full length that I wanted for this back panel. And if you wanna do the same length as me, I'm just gonna count like these mesh rows. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total of the mesh rows. And since we were repeating rows two through five, your final row should be like this fifth row, just the plain double crochets. And for reference, this is about 15 inches long from like the top here to the top right here. But once you have the length that you want, then you're just gonna chain three and turn. And so basically this is gonna be the top of this back panel. And now we wanna kind of flatten out this top edge. 
so that it's not wavy like that and so it's just straight across and we can easily connect it when we're ready to do our neck opening and we're like connecting our panels and stuff so once you have your chain three there that chain three is going to count as a treble crochet and so in this next stitch we're going to make another treble crochet so to do that you're wrapping the yarn twice around the hook like that and then go into this next stitch right there which should be a decrease stitch and then pull up a loop you're going to yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops and yarn over pull through two loops so that's going to count as our second treble crochet and then we're going to make one more so wrap the yarn twice around the hook go into the next stitch make a treble crochet so pull through two pull through two and pull through two so we have three treble crochets there and then now we're going to make two double crochets one in each stitch so just wrap the yarn once, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, so that's one. Then in the next stitch, wrap the yarn once, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through two. So we have three trebles, two doubles, and now that we have two double crochets there, we're gonna make two half double crochets. So wrap the yarn once, pull up a loop in this next stitch and just pull yarn over and pull through all three loops for one half double crochet and we're gonna do the same thing in this next stitch so pull up a loop and pull through three loops so two half double crochets and now in these next two stitches we're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch so just pull up a loop you should have two loops on the hook and yarn over and pull through two and then do the same thing in the next stitch. So to recap, we did the chain three, which counted as our first treble, and then two more trebles, and then two doubles, two half doubles, and then two singles. So as you can kind of see, it's kind of filling in these gaps with the height of each stitch. And so we're also gonna do the same here, and it's just gonna kind of fill in the differences in height. So in the next three stitches, which if you did that correctly, these three stitches should be the cluster of three where we did that increase of three on the previous row. So in all of these three stitches, we're gonna do slip stitches. So just insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. So there's one, two, and three, like that. And now we're just gonna do the mirror image of what we did over here. So now we're gonna do two single crochets. So there's one, two, and then we're gonna do two half double crochets. There's one, two, and now we're gonna do two double crochets. One, two, and then now we're gonna do the treble crochets. And with the treble crochets, that's the one stitch that we're gonna do three of. Well, I guess we're also doing three for the slip stitches. So for the slip stitches and the treble crochets, you're doing three, but for all the other ones, you're just doing sets of two. So now make a treble by wrapping twice around the hook. Two, two, and two. And then now two more trebles. So there's my second and then my third. So another way of looking at it is that you can just say that you do two trebles each time except for at the beginning of a repetition. So like we did three here, but you could act like you're doing just two trebles here and this one is part of the new repetition. So we're gonna do one, two, three trebles, two doubles, two half doubles, two singles, and then three slip stitches. So. That's another way of looking at it, but basically you can kind of map it out by looking at where your peak and your troughs are. Troughs? 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 I think it's trough. <laughs> um, but basically I can see that I'm gonna do two trebles there. In addition, like I did my three trebles here, I'm gonna do two there and then two doubles there and then two half doubles and then two singles and then that st stops us right before these three increase stitches where we're gonna do our uh, slip stitches. So that's just kind of how to figure out where you need to go. But yeah, so I made my three trebles there and now I'm gonna make two more trebles to start this next repetition. And then this is my second. So you should have five trebles in a row. So there's like that one treble right there that's like the center 
treble crochet and then everything else is like a mirror image around that center treble crochet. And now I'm gonna do two doubles. And then half double, two of them. And then two singles. And now we're back here at this three and that's how you know you did it right. And now you can just do three slip stitches. And now we're just mirroring, so do a single, do another single, do two half doubles, do two doubles, and then we're gonna do our trebles. So there's one treble and two trebles, and then now you could say like you need to do start of the next repetition where we're gonna start with three trebles and then do the two doubles, two half doubles, and so on. So you're just gonna repeat this pattern all the way down and as you can see, it's kind of flattening out this top bit so now we can easily attach it when we're starting to attach our panels. So just go ahead and do this all the way down the row and then I'll get back to you once we get to the end. So I'm here at the end now. I just did my two double crochets so now it's time to do treble crochets, so I'm gonna do one treble crochet there, and then we're gonna do two more. So three total at the end. And our last one's gonna be in this previous row's double crochet. We're not gonna go into those chains right there. So just go ahead and do that third and final treble crochet, and then you can just chain one, and we're gonna cut our yarn and pull it through. And now we are gonna start working on our front panels. So to make our first front panel, it's basically exactly what we just did. So you're gonna do exactly what we just did, except you're gonna do half of the width. So for example, I chained 80 last time, and so now I'm just gonna chain 40, which is half of 80 obviously, and you still need it to be that multiple of 20, but just whatever multiple you did, divide that in two so you can get half of the width. And you're gonna follow all of the exact same instructions, doing everything that I did, um, just working half of the width basically, but you're not gonna go the full length. I'll show you what my exact length is before we start decreasing, but it'll be about to here. So just keep watching to see how far I go, but I'm gonna go ahead and do up to there off camera and show you what that looks like. But again, you're just doing half of that multiple that you did at the beginning for this back panel. Um, and then just follow all of the steps that I showed you earlier, but obviously it's just a shorter width. Um, and you're just gonna do that for about this height. And then we'll start decreasing to make like the front panel. Okay, so this is how far I went on my little front piece and this is where it goes on the back piece so as you can see mine is about halfway up the whole length of this back piece but if you're doing a different height than me then what i recommend is doing about seven inches from the top of your back piece like going up from however long you made the bottom go all the way until you have about seven inches left so you can see that's about seven inches from like the little trough right there to the top of this back piece. And so I just made my second decrease at the end of row five. And now you're gonna chain one. And basically what we're gonna be doing now is decreasing this side so it kind of gradually goes in like that. So this is where it's gonna be tying to the other piece that's gonna be a mirror image of this. And so we're gradually going in on this side. And then on this side, this is where like the armpit is, the arm opening. So we're just gonna stop crocheting there just completely. We're not even gonna decrease, it's just gonna stop there and then go straight up there to make that arm opening but on this side we are going to be decreasing to get that kind of slope and then we'll just work on the like shoulder strap kind of part so after we chain one there we are going to be decreasing three single crochet stitches so you're going to go into that very first stitch pull up a loop but instead of yarning over pull through those loops we're going to go into the second stitch pull up a loop and then we're also going to go into the third stitch. So you should have four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four loops. So we're gonna be decreasing at the 
beginning coming from this side and going towards that side. But again, we're not gonna be decreasing on this side. So now I'm just gonna be doing one single crochet into every other double crochet. And we're not doing any of the ripples anymore. So we're just not, we're not doing any like increased stitches like this or any decreases unless we're at the very end to again, get that little decreased slope there, but we're not doing like the ripple increases or decreases. So just do one single crochet in the rest of the stitches, but we're not going to be going all the way down the row. We're going to stop about there. So where I'm stopping is going to be a little less than a third of the total width. And I'll give you my actual like stitch numbers and stuff too, but it's going to kind of depend on the size you're making. If you're making bigger, then you might need to leave more here. So yeah, I think a little less than a third of the total width because I'm at like about 2.4, 2.5 of nine inches is the amount that I'm leaving off here. But if you're making like the same size as me, then the, the place that I'm stopping is right before that peak of the increase of three, the final three increase on the previous row. So I'm doing it right before that center of the peak is where I'm gonna stop. And then we are gonna chain three at this point and turn. And like I said, we aren't doing any decreases over here. We're trying to keep this straight. We're gonna be doing our decreases over here. So I'm not gonna decrease anything at the beginning here. I'm gonna do like normal where I don't go in this stitch, don't go in this stitch, go in this one right there after doing the chain three. And then you're gonna chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet into that next one. And then you're gonna keep doing this. Again, we're not doing any increases or decreases in the center um, to make those rippled. We're not doing the ripples anymore. So skip a stitch, go into the next one, and just do this all the way down. And then we'll make a decrease at the end. So I'm at the end here, and it might be a little difficult to see, but basically I have this single crochet to go into and then this single crochet and then this one is the single crochet three together that we did at the beginning the decrease of three so i technically have three stitches left and this is how i'm going to do this decrease but this is where you're going to have to kind of customize this to be your own basically you just generally want to decrease on going towards this side and coming from this side but if you're doing different stitches and stuff than me, then it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly what I'm showing and that's completely fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. But what is important is that you will want to write down like exactly what you're doing so that you can replicate it on the other side. Because once we do this panel, you're going to have to do exactly the same thing on the other panel. And if it's a little bit different, it's not going to match up and it's just going to look different. So you have to be able to replicate what we do here or what you do here on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is normally I would just skip this stitch, go into this one, but I'm gonna be skipping those two and then going into that last one. And that's gonna be doing a decrease. So I'm gonna go into that last single crochet three together and that's gonna be my decrease going towards the end. So that's just what I do, but again, you know, do whatever works for you. And now chain one and turn. And now I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier with the um, single crochet three together. So I'm gonna go into that very first stitch there and then go into the chain one gap and then go into the stitch right after. And then yarn over and pull through all three to do a decrease of three. And then we're just gonna do a single crochet into every single stitch. So you're doing one single crochet in the gaps and then a single crochet for each stitch as well, just all the way down. So I'm getting towards the end here, like where we stopped, and I'm just gonna carry on one single crochet in every stitch. And remember, we're not decreasing on this side. And our very last stitch is actually gonna be in this gap, this chain one space at the very end. So do your final single crochet there, and then chain two and turn. And again, we're not decreasing, and our first double crochet is gonna be in that first stitch where our chain two is. So go there, because we're trying to keep it nice and straight. 
on this side. And so now we're just gonna do double crochets into every stitch, just all the way across. And then at the end, we'll do some decreases. So basically you're just doing like, it's exactly the same pattern as what we did down here. We're just not doing the increases and decreases to get the wavy effect. So we're just doing a double crochet in every stitch. And so I'm at the end here, and remember we are doing a decrease. So I have three stitches remaining, one, two, and then that single crochet, three together there. And so now that I have three remaining, I'm gonna do a decrease with three together with the double crochet. So pull up a loop, go through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull through two, and then go into that last one, pull through two, and then pull through four to make a decrease. And now chain one and turn. And you kind of know the drill by now with the single crochet decreases. So we're gonna start with that first one, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop, and go into that next one and pull up a loop with four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all four. And then at this point, it's just single crochets all the way down until we get to that stopping point where we're not gonna be doing a decrease because it's not the side where we do decreases. Our last stitch is gonna be into that previous row's double crochet. We're not going into the chains here, but just go into that double crochet. And then chain three, turn. And now we're not going into this one that we're currently in. We're not going into this next one, but we're going into this one, just like we normally do. This isn't a decrease or anything. Skip a stitch, go into the next one, chain one. And we're just doing this until we get to the end where we're gonna make some decreases. And now I have three stitches remaining. So instead of just skipping this one, going into this one, I'm gonna skip those two, go into this last one, the double crochet, and now chain one, turn. So you can kind of see what's happening here. It's like going in there and this part is just kind of staying straight and if it's like bubbling up and stuff that's fine you can always block this piece later um, to make it nice and flat but mine's not doing too bad but you probably get it by now we're doing a decrease so go in that first one pull up a loop second one that gap space pull up a loop and then that third one pull up a loop yarn over pull through four loops and then just single crochets in every other stitch. And then here at the end, this is the straight side. Our last stitch is again gonna be in that gap right after the last double crochet. So go into that gap and then chain two and then turn. And we're gonna go into that very first stitch, the one that we're currently in with the double crochet. And then go all the way down one double crochet into every single single crochet. I've got three stitches remaining now, so I'm gonna do a decrease with those three together with a double crochet. So pull up a loop, pull through two, go in the next one, pull through two, and then go in that last one, pull through two, and pull through four. Then chain one, turn, and we're gonna do some single crochet decreases. So go in that first one, pull up a loop, second one, pull up a loop, and third one, pull up a loop and pull through all four, just like we've been doing. And then it's just a single crochet into all of the remaining stitches. I'm at the end now. I'm gonna go into this last stitch, which is the previous row's double crochet with a single crochet and then chain three and turn. And at this point, you can kind of decide um, how much you want to decrease so i'd recommend just trying this on remember that this part is going under your armpit um, and about like right in the middle under your armpit and it's going to be connecting to that back piece so you can kind of hold them up to your body see how it's going to fit and see if this is thin enough for like a strap this is obviously going to be like the center of your chest so just hold it up there see if you like how it's looking see if you want to continue decreasing this side or if you're happy with this width up here and if you're happy with it then we're just going to keep continuing up not increasing or decreasing just going one into every stitch until we have a length that is the same height as this piece so this is about how much more length i need on this piece to match this back piece so for this row we're going to start by 
just like normal, skip this stitch, skip this one, go into this one with a double crochet, chain one, skip this stitch, go into the next, double crochet, chain one, skip this stitch, go into the next, chain one, skip this stitch, go into the next, and just do this all the way down. As you can see here, uh, I have only one stitch remaining technically, but we're gonna be going into this last chain as well, like the chain one there. So I'm gonna go into there, and we are gonna be counting those chains as stitches, so you're gonna be going into the chains now, just to make sure that you're keeping um, the same width all the way across. So I went to that chain, and now chain one, turn, and now since this is gonna count as a stitch, we're not gonna put a stitch right there. We're just gonna go into that first space there, and then just one single cro crochet in every other space. And then also the stitches right after the spaces. And then remember, since we are counting those chains as stitches, we also have to go into the stitch at the end. So normally we were just going into the space as our last stitch. We're gonna go into the space and we're gonna go into this top chain at the very end. So like that, and that's our last stitch. And now chain two and turn. So this chain is gonna count as our stitch, so we're not going into that very first stitch, but we're gonna go into this next one, and then all of the remaining ones just all the way down. Here I am at the end, so I'm gonna go into this last single crochet, but I also have to go into the chain right next to it, which is gonna be hard to see. You can just kind of go into that area right there and just pick something up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just gonna go right there and make my last double crochet, then chain one, turn, single crochets, so we're not going in that first stitch since this chain is counting as that stitch. So go into this next one and then all the way down. Then going into this last double crochet and then also the second chain of this chain two and then chain three. Now don't go into this stitch or this next one, but this next one, this third one with a double crochet, chain one. Skip this stitch, go into the next. I'm sure you guys kind of get the drill by now, but I just wanna show you just in case. And so I'm skipping this stitch, going into the next one, and then chain one, and then I have this stitch and then that chain as my second. So we're gonna go into the chain as our final. And then chain one. Now we're doing single crochets. So this is exactly the same pattern that I've been doing. I've done it for a few times now. So you hopefully should kind of get the pattern here, but we're just doing one stitch into every stitch. Um, no decreases or increases, just straight across and make sure that you are counting your chains as stitches, meaning that you don't put a stitch right after making a chain like into that same stitch, but you do have to go into that final chain at the end. You don't stop here at the stitch. So I go into this stitch and then I go into the chain one gap. And then I also go into that final chain like that. So you're just gonna do this until you have a height that meets about to the height of this back panel. All right, so I finished the height that I wanted and my last row was single crochets and I just clipped it just to like show you where we're gonna be sewing. So we're sewing or crocheting, we're not actually sewing. We're gonna be crocheting um, the very left of this back panel to the very left of the shoulder piece. Uh, and then we're also gonna go up the side up until we started, we stopped going right there, if that makes sense. And we started only going here and straight up this side. Like I said, I ended up with a single crochet row and that's just what I like to do because I feel like it's just easy to connect to the back. But I also think like the, any row is basically easy. I just don't like doing it for this mesh row. So I just recommend not stopping on the mesh row, but it's fine. Um, just stop on some row that's not the mesh row so you can easily slip stitch and see like which stitches you're going into and stuff. And also you wanna end like on the left side where this is like the armpit side laying on 
the back panel so that we can slip stitch and then work from there to there, from the outside, inside. Hopefully that makes sense. I feel like that was a little bit confusing, but you wanna end on this side of your work. This is where we, we're doing the decreases on the right. You wanna end on the left so that we can attach our yarn in the very corner and then work that way just to make sure we're getting all of the stitches. So I just finished my last single crochet. I haven't chained one or anything. I'm just gonna remove my, my hook by loosening this yarn and I'm gonna flip this over. So now we're gonna be working like from the back and you're gonna insert your hook into the top chain of this chain three here like that. And then you're gonna insert your hook into that stitch that you just made, that single crochet. And then you're gonna put this loop on your hook and you're gonna just tighten that down. And now we're gonna slip stitch these together. So you're gonna pull that loop through that single crochet and then you're gonna also pull it through that chain that was on your hook. So that was our first slip stitch. And now you're gonna go into this next stitch, this, I think it's a treble crochet because this is when we were adding height. So this treble crochet, insert your hook there and then go into this very next stitch on this back piece. So this single crochet, pull up a loop and pull it through all of the loops on your hook to make a slip stitch. And then go into this next stitch and the corresponding stitch over here and make another slip stitch. And then go in this next one, in this stitch, and we're just slip stitching all the way down just to um, the length of this back piece. And you wanna make these kind of loose. Don't make it too tight or it'll kind of cinch together like that. So you wanna make them loose so you can kind of pull your yarn out a little bit. And then like after this, I'll pull it out and just make them nice and loose there. And going into these slip stitches might be a little bit difficult, but you're just going in from the front there and then go to this corresponding stitch and do a slip stitch. Same thing for this next one. Just push that through and then go into this stitch. Then our last one is gonna be in this last chain right here. So we have one more. So go into this chain and then do your slip stitch. And now you can chain one and we're gonna cut our yarn and then pull that through. So now, as you can see, we have this seam now, and this is gonna be the inside, by the way. Once we're done, you'll turn it inside out. So this is like on the outside. And now we are gonna attach our yarn over here and we're gonna just slip stitch up the side here and then we'll make that armhole there. So before we start, I just wanna tell you like how many stitches per row we have for each row. So here for our double crochet rows, those are gonna be two stitches tall. And then for our single crochet rows, those are one stitch tall. So this is a double crochet row as well. So that's two stitches wide or tall. And then this is a single crochet row, that's one. This is two, one, two. So it just goes alternating one and two. And that's how many slip stitches we're gonna be doing per row one or two, depending on whether it's a single crochet or a double crochet row. So we're gonna start by just inserting our hook into the very bottom, the very bottom chain right there of this back panel right here. And then we're also gonna insert our hook into the very bottom chain of this front panel like that. Now grab your yarn and make a slip knot Put the slip knot on your hook and tighten it down and then just pull it through to make a slip stitch. So that's gonna count as our first slip stitch. And so we need two since this is a double crochet row right there. So we're gonna go somewhere into this double crochet row. I'm just gonna go right there, but it doesn't really matter. There's no exact place you have to go into because these aren't real stitches since we're going like sideways, not into actual stitches. And I'm gonna try and go into the exact same place on the other side and just pull up a loop and pull through all of the loops on your hook to make a slip stitch. So now we have two slip stitches for that row and this next row is a single crochet row. So we're just gonna do one. So I'm gonna go about right there, insert my hook, do the same thing on the other side 
and just slip stitch. And make sure you're doing these loose again. For this next row, that's a double crochet, double crochet row. So we're gonna do two. So I'm gonna go kind of in the bottom of this row. Same thing over here. Do a slip stitch, make it nice and loose, and then make our second one kind of towards the top of that same row, because this is a double crochet row. So we need two slip stitches. So I'm just going into the top-ish, and then again over here, nice and loose, and just slip stitch. Next row is gonna be a single crochet, so we're just doing one, one, and just slip stitch those together. And we're just gonna do this all the way up. So I have one more row remaining here, so I'm just gonna do that row, it's a double crochet row. So just start at the bottom, just like normal, and it's a little bit hard to do here at the end. But just do, that's my first slip stitch for the row. And then I'll do the second right here. Just go into the top somewhere there and slip stitch and now chain one. And this is where you'll decide if you wanna do a tank top version of this or a sleeve version of this. I'm, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the sleeve version, but for the tank top version, this is just where you'll stop. So you'll just detach your yarn here. But if you wanna do the sleeve version, which is what I'll be showing you, then we're gonna just go around here for the sleeve. And now we are gonna be working single crochets all the way around using the same kind of technique that we did for the slip stitches as far as how many you do per row. So my first row is gonna be up here at this single crochet. So I'm just gonna do a single crochet into the side of that single crochet. And then the next row is a double crochet row. So I'm gonna do two single crochets in that row. Then we have a single crochet row. I'll do one. Then we have double crochets, so two. And you're just gonna be alternating one and two single crochets per row. So there was one, and then one, two, and then one, and then two in this one. And we're just gonna do this all the way around, but you want to go ahead and count how many single crochets you do starting with that very first one there. And just make sure that you have an even number of single crochets. I also wanted to show you what we're gonna do over this part. So this is technically like a treble crochet right there. That's when we were filling in the gaps. I'm just gonna do two uh, single crochets here. This part doesn't really, it doesn't matter exactly. You just wanna make sure you have that even number at the end. So either add one or subtract one. And then I'll just do one for this whole area. And then just carry on. This one's two, because it's double crochet. And then just do the same thing all the way around. I just wanted to show you what we're doing at this seam area, because it's a little bit weird. And I also wanted to show you like the end here, where these are actual stitches that you're going into. You're just gonna do one in every stitch. Nothing special. You don't have to do like two per stitch or anything like that. You're just doing one single crochet into every stitch. I'm at the end and I have 66 single crochets. So I have that even number. So if you don't have an even number, then I would just like skip that last stitch and just go straight into the next step. So you'll have an even number. And so our first single crochet is this one right here. And once you have your even number all the way around, you're gonna slip stitch into that first one. And now, you're gonna chain three and turn this way. So our chains are always gonna be counting as a stitch. So we're not gonna go into that one, not gonna go into that one, but go into this one right there. So we're skipping this stitch in between and then chain one and we're just doing our like mesh stitch. So you just chain one, skip a stitch and then double crochet, chain one all the way around. And when you get back to the end here, you should have like one stitch and then those chains that you made. So do the chain one, skip that stitch, and then go into the second chain from the bottom. So not the third chain, but the second chain there. And now chain one and turn, go this way. And again, that chain one's counting as a stitch. So our first stitch is gonna be 
into this space and we're just doing single crochets. It's just the same pattern we've been doing. No increases or decreases, just one in every stitch all the way around. So do one single crochet for the chain one spaces and then a single crochet into each double crochet. So here at the end, our last stitch is gonna be in this gap right before this previous row's double crochet there. So just make that last single crochet. And then again, like normal, we're going into that chain one. Oops. Like that, slip stitch, and then chain two and turn. And our first stitch is not gonna be where we currently are because that's counting as our stitch. We're gonna go right next to it and just make double crochets, one in each stitch all the way around. So I'm pretty sure you're getting the general pattern here, but you're just gonna keep following this pattern. Obviously next will be single crochet, just doing the pattern where you're counting these chains as a stitch. So make sure you're not adding any stitches or decreasing anything. But yeah, you're just gonna keep doing what we've been doing until you have a sleeve length that you want. I'm gonna do a pretty short sleeve, but if you really wanted, you could make a nice long sleeve. Um, but I'm just gonna have like a cute, like very open, wide, short sleeve. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, so this is the length that I ended up doing for my sleeve. So once you're happy with the length of your sleeve, then just chain one and cut your yarn, pull that through. And now, like I said earlier, we're basically doing exactly what we just did. So go back and watch the part where I show how to make the panel, the front panel, and just make the exact same thing. So just go back, watch that video, do exactly what I said again, or if you did yours a little bit differently, then hopefully you took notes like I said you should. Um, but yeah, just make exactly the same panel that we did earlier and then come back and I'll show you how we attach it and all of that. So as you can see, I did my other panel. It's just a mirror image of this first one we made. And so now I'm just gonna show you how you're gonna connect it, but it's basically exactly the same. Um, but right after I did this single crochet row, I did exactly what I did over here. I just flipped it. I'm gonna go into that rightmost stitch, insert my hook into that single crochet, and then insert my hook into the rightmost stitch of this back panel. And then I'm gonna put this loop on my hook and then tighten that down. And then you can just pull that through. So that's like gonna count as our first slip stitch. And then go into this second stitch and then the second stitch over here. And we're just slip stitching just exactly how we did um, for the other panel. So I just wanted to show you how to start that because it's a little bit different, but basically the same. Everything else is the same. So I'm just gonna Basically, we're almost done, guys. So I'm just gonna finish up doing this part, slip stitching all the way down here, every corresponding stitch, then cut my yarn, then attach down here at the bottom and slip stitch all the way up the side, just like we did over here, um, up until this stitch right there. And then I'm gonna add my sleeves, do the same length and the same number around that I did on this side and yeah so i attached everything and then did the sleeve on the other side as well so everything's done basically we just need to do the tie for like tying both sides together so on each side we're going to do the same thing so i'll just show you how to do one side i'm going to go right there into the side of the row where we first started decreasing right here so that was that single crochet row right there right under this mesh thing so I'm gonna go into the very side of that row with my hook and make a slip knot with the yarn and just attach that. And I'm just gonna chain one to secure that in place. But basically you're just gonna chain enough to tie, make a tie, a knot um, loosely with the other side. You want a little bit extra because you kind of want that like little bit hanging and you don't want it to be difficult to tie. So just gonna chain enough um, to tie to this other side. So I've got one there, two, three, four, 
So I did 60 chains total, which ended up being about 13 inches long. But now in the second chain from your hook, so skip this one right next to the hook and go into this one, we're gonna make a single crochet. And now we're just gonna single crochet into every single chain all the way down just to give it some strength. So I'm just finishing up in my second to last chain and then go into that very last chain there. And then you're gonna want to kind of turn it so that this is like the bottom of the top. So I'm gonna be connecting it like that. Sorry that you can't see that. This is the bottom, I'm gonna be connecting it like that. So just insert your hook a little bit further down from where you are and where you attached your yarn. So like right there and just make a slip stitch and then chain one and cut your yarn. So now I've pretty much shown you what you need to see. We did the tie. So now you just have to do the exact same thing on this other side and then just go ahead and weave in all of your ends with your darning needle and then we're gonna be done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this other side, the other tie, exactly the same length that I did on this side and in the same spot and everything. So that's even. Um, and then I'll weave in my ends and stuff and then I'll show you what the top looks like. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video as always drop any questions or concerns that you're having with making the top and I will help you out. And don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and do all of the things. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. You know the drill. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.